Hello everyone. Welcome to module 2 of our Spring Security course. So this is the second lesson of our uh, module 2 and in this lesson we are going to talk about the Spring Security logout feature. Uh, we have already talked about the registration and the login process and the logout is an integral part of any secure application in the sense that you want to make sure that once customer clicks onto the logout all the sensitive window and the authentication information should be cleaned out from the system and the spring security have a really good default mechanism uh, if you follow that mechanism most of the uh, kind of a standard behavior will be automatically taken care uh, by spring security but it also provides you an option to override and customize the behavior okay all in all there are two ways you can uh, perform or you can configure the spring security to, to do a logout for us one is where the method type is get another is a method type post right so those are the two ways so this one the commented one is a get and the other one is a post and the recommended option is to go for the post all right uh, so in terms of the get if you still want to go with the first option maybe due to any reason there are a certain things which you have to be careful okay so i'm going to quickly talk about those one okay so uh, we have not talked about this one but by default the there is a feature which says a csrf token uh, being generated automatically by the spring security and this is one of the mechanism where spring security makes sure that any post form is is secure means no one is manipulating the data and we will going to talk about that into a separate lesson but the whole idea is if your form type method type is post spring security automatically inject this information okay so uh, there are when you use a type as a guest get by default if this is enabled you will get an error so there are two ways you can handle it uh, if you still want to use a, a logout as a get uh, one you disable this functionality altogether so that means there will be no token will uh, token generated or and to do that let's quickly check that one okay so to do that you will say csrf and then disable it okay so that's the way of disabling your functionality i will not recommend that one because uh, uh, that means you are exposing yourself to a uh, certain threats so don't do that now the other option is uh, we will going to talk about that uh, into the last part of this uh, tutorial is similarly to the form login process we can also configure the logout information and we will see if you don't want to disable the uh, this functionality there is a one other way where you can customize the spring security and still keep uh, the method as a get okay now let's talk about the other option the other option is where your form type should be post so you are basically posting your form to a specific url and this is a pre-configured url you cannot override that one you should not be using doing that one okay now uh, it's basically nothing but instead of a get you do a post so let's see that into action I am onto the login screen. I have filled all the information and now I logged in. Okay. So if you see, uh, this is the secure session ID. And every time we do a login, if you remember from our last uh, uh, discussions, Spring Security creates a new session for us. It's a part of the session fixation policy. Uh, we will cover that as well. All right. Now, if I do a logout, right and i'm going to look into the session id all right so if you see both the session ids are different so that means spring security has taken care of couple of things now when spring uh, when we use this feature build in a feature of the logout spring security actually doing a multiple things for us and let's quickly look into this before we get into the next part of our tutorial so the first thing 
but Spring Security internally doing is it's invalidating the HTTP session for us. So it want to make sure that the active session is no longer uh, carry the information. So it's going to uh, kind of invalidate that session. Uh, if there is any remember me uh, cookies and other things, it's going to clean those out. Uh, we will be talking about remember me in the next art in next section. Uh, uh, if you remember from our last previous discussions I have told it multiple times that security context holder is the central location where Spring Security stores all the authentication information. So it want to make sure that your authentication information is cleared from the security context holder. Okay. And then it redirects you to a certain page. Uh, the default configuration is it redirects you to the slash login and then there is a this parameter which is a logout. All right. Uh, there are two more things the recommended way is doing a post but as I said if you want to do a get there are certain things you have to be uh, aware of Quite easy right uh, you have only pointed it to a certain URL and rest of the things are already taken care of but uh, this might not fit into each and every situation where you want to do a certain things and once we get into the advanced topics I am very sure you want to handle login and the logout uh, in a little different way. So the Spring Security Fluent API where we are doing we are configuring certain things like what are the secure URL non secure URLs what are the users who are authorized to access, access those URLs uh, we can also configure the logout behavior okay all right so there are certain things which i want you to look into it so the delete cookie is uh, by default spring security is going to take care of a certain things for example remember me cookies and other things right but let's say you are creating the cookies and storing it uh, post login process. Maybe uh, there are a certain information you want to store into the cookies or once the customer logged into the system. And now you also want to make sure that once the logout happened, uh, those cookies should be cleared out. So you can always pass on the information. Okay. So delete cookies are basically you pass on the cookies name and it is going to uh, take care of those things. Okay. Clear authentication as I said it's automatically going to take care of uh, for you but let's say um, you want to do it yourself through the Fluent API you can always pass a boolean value. Uh, this is the default logout success handler. Uh, it's part of the su uh, hand success or the failure handlers. I'm going to talk about that later into the this series. Invalidate HTTP session as I said by default uh, Spring Security does that for us but you can explicitly pass those information i'm not going to talk about this one logout success handler is again a part of the handlers where you want to do a certain uh, things as part of your uh, logout process all right logout success url is where do you want to redirect users post the logout process uh, if you remember from this example it is uh, passing it to this url but you can always configure it okay so you can go through all these methods. Uh, you can look into the Java docs and get more details. But the idea here is uh, most of the things will be taken care automatically by Spring Security. Uh, but you can always do a uh, you can always override or a customize the things. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just to give you an idea how it works. I'm going to use this method which say delete cookies and I'm say I'm going to say remove the dummy cookie and in our one of our method okay which is going to be our home controller method I'm going to add a cookie uh, so this is not the right place of adding the cookie but just to demonstrate how it works the delete cookies works I'm just going to add into the controller but if you want to add a cookies during your um, authentication process I, uh, I I recommend that you should be using the handlers success handlers to uh, basically achieve that functionality all right so I have modified my home controller which is the one uh, this controller is triggered whenever uh, there is a 
login success so customer will be redirected to this section and i'm just adding this dummy cookie with the value as a dummy cookies okay so let's see how this entire thing work all together all right so there was one mistake uh, it was we written as a dummy cookies and here it was a dummy cookie so i have corrected that one okay so let's go back here to our login page okay let's see our cookies so we have a j session id so i'm going to do a quick login here all right so i am logged in let's look into the cookies now we have the j session id and along with that we have this dummy cookie with the r values so let's do a logout and see if the dummy cookie is still there or not because we have told spring security to delete that cookies during the logout process so we so the logout is done let's look it in the cookies so if you see now we have only a j session id so uh so that's give you an idea what kind of a flexibilities and the uh, the things being supported by the spring security again uh, this was the kind of a basics of the logout process uh, as i said most of the core things will be taken care by the spring security but for an enterprise application we definitely need to add a few other things into the system and uh, once we will talk about the success handlers or uh, uh, failure handlers these are a different kind of a things which you can configure in order to do some additional work on top of what spring security is doing for us so once we get into those uh, details we are going to enhance both login and logout functionality to inject those handlers and see what kind of a functionalities we can achieve through those handlers so i hope that will give you an idea how uh, how to configure your application to perform a logout and what kind of extension points you have in place uh, which you can utilize uh, for your logout process if you like this tutorial uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel